The Hot and Hazy update introduced the first world-changing event in Grounded. With the addition of gum to the game, we can now turn off the haze, which creates positive and negative effects in the backyard. The decision to turn it off or leave it on should not be taken lightly, as once you turn it off, it cannot be turned back on. In this video, I'll give you all the reasons why you should and should not turn off the haze so you can decide what to do. Before we begin, make sure to click the subscribe button below and turn on notifications so you never miss any future Grounded videos. Let's get started. First up, we're going to talk about the positives of turning off the haze. Now, if you don't know how to turn off the haze, I have an entire video for that, and I'll leave a link for that at the end of this video as well as down in the description below. Basically, what you have to do is plug the Wii Killer up over here, and the biggest positive you're going to notice right away is there's no haze area. So the fog is gone. That means you can explore the haze area, which is basically this entire part of the map over here. You can explore that freely without having to wear a gas mask or putting on the fresh defense mutation. Prior to turning it off, you're going to have to have those. Otherwise, you're going to start taking damage very quickly. So that's the first positive. The second positive is you're going to see that there's going to be tons of resources down here. So I'm in my creative world. This isn't one of my creative worlds. I did not do this in any of my survival worlds yet. What you're going to notice down here is you're going to see tons of resources. Number one, there's going to be lots of good insects in here. So there's, of course, there's little ants in here. But you're also going to notice there's a lot of bombardier beetles in here. There's also going to be stink bugs in here. So you're going to get free bombardier beetle parts, free stink bug parts. And then down inside of the canyons that are over here, the abyss, whatever you want to call it, you're going to notice there's some other good resources. So let's find those real quick. Here's one of the canyons that are in the area of the haze that if you have not plugged the haze up, you're not going to be able to see what's down here. So this is going to be completely fogged out. You're not going to be able to see what's down here unless you come down inside of it. And of course, down here, we're going to have, like I said, there's stink bug parts. There is a ton of quartzite here. So I did a video on the best places to get quartzite. The haze area is far and away the best place to get quartzite. There's more quartzite in this area than any other place on the map. But you're all, what you're going to have to deal with, though, is the fact that you're going to have to be coming in here either in the haze or if you turn it off, there's still going to be infected, infected insects all over the place and strange spores. But you're also going to notice there are some mint chunks down here. There, is there a, there's a crow feather here. This is a very good place to get crow feathers. It might be one of the best places to get crow feathers. There's crow feathers all over the place in here. And there's also several mint chunks. There's going to be some milk molars and mega molars down here. Now, of course, those are one-time things, but you're going to need to come down here and get them. So if you don't turn off the haze, you're going to have to get them without turning off the haze. And then, of course, you're also going to be able to see the insects that are wandering around pretty clearly. If it's When it's hazy, it might be a little bit hard to see them, especially depending on your screen or how much render distance you have. But when you have the haze turned off, you can clearly see them. Now, once again, this is creative, so they're not attacking me. Normally, these guys would be bombarding me with their attacks or coming right after me. Here's another area. There's more bombardier beetles. There's a couple feathers down here. And of course, there's more quartzite because I haven't farmed it recently. All these things do come back. Every time you come over here, you're going to find probably find more of these resources. I think they take a couple in-game in days to respawn. I'm pretty sure the crow feathers are just here all the time. I have not confirmed that. I don't want to say that's 100% true. But every time I come over here, there are crow feathers. And I don't really even notice. I know the crow can land up on top of the weed killer 420 over there. But I don't I don't ever like I don't see it flying over here and just dropping feathers all the time. There just seems to be lots of feathers in here. So I think they're making it the trade-offs of turn the positives are basically they're putting lots of resources in there that are good for you. And that may be one of the benefits of turning it off. And of course, you're gonna need quartz type to upgrade weapons currently and possibly need it in the future for other things. So those are the positives. Now, of course, there are negatives that come along with it. The biggest negative is you're gonna see these insects all over the backyard. So the ladybugs, the larva. 100% I've seen wandering pretty far outside the haze and I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the spots I've seen them just to show you how far they go and one other thing we didn't show while we were over here was the strange spore so let's see if we can see a strange spore down here real quick yeah those are these things over here that are exploding let's see if it comes back yeah so these things basically if you get too close to them what ends up happening is they will explode if there's a strange spore on there I don't see anyone here right now must have destroyed them already but those things will explode so they'll end up spreading across the map so i'll just show you just the extent of how far it's spread and that's going to probably be the biggest factor in determining whether or not you want to do it because of course we have all the positives the negatives are going to be having to deal with these infective insects and if, and strange spores all over the map so let's go take a look at some of the main spots that you're going to see them in the first place I'm going to show you where the infected is spread is underneath the picnic table. Now, under this picnic table is relatively safe. I say relatively because there are some bombardier beetles over by the cleaning shovel. There can be bees back here laying in the grass if you get too close to the beehive. And there are ore weavers way back in the back here. But generally, like underneath this area right here, it's relatively safe. I'm not sure if the wolf spider patrol is over here. I've not seen it over here, but that doesn't mean it doesn't. But what you're going to see now, if you turn off the haze, there's going to be at least one, if not two, infected ladybugs over here. So there we have one, there we have two. 
And you're also going to see the strange spores over here. Since I didn't show you that a second ago, let me show you what happens if you get too close and don't chop it. It will explode and do damage to you. Now, of course, I'm in creative, so it's not doing damage to me right now, but it would do a decent amount of damage to you in survival, depending on what difficulty you're playing on. So aside from the fact that they're over here and you have to deal with them, of course, the positives are going to be they're cutting all this grass down for you if you want to gather it. And they're also going to be they might actually take out some bees for you and possibly even a roly poly if you could lure it over here if they wander back there. I haven't I don't know exactly where they go here. I guess they can wander anywhere, maybe into the dry grass here. I don't know. But one of the, the other the downside is going to be number one, you're going to have to deal with them. So it's not going to be safe to really build under here anymore. Number two, if you have performance issues, all this grass laying around on the ground is going to be a problem. Now, I don't know why they're designed to do this, but they will just randomly attack grass and stuff like that. And as you can see, their explosions cause tons of stuff to fall down. So if you have performance issues, that might be a big negative on why you might not want to turn off the haze currently until they fix this or make them just do less damage. I think it will be okay if like they were trying to attack you and they destroyed it. But these guys will just randomly walk around and just start destroying grass and stuff for no, no apparent reason. So let's move on to the next spot that the infected is spread to. Now I'm making my way over to where the stink bugs spawn. This is going to be near the anthill. There's an anthill right here. So this is the dry grass area. The cassette tape is back there. And basically what you're going to notice here is where the stink bugs are. There's now an infected ladybug wandering around. We also have strange spores all over the place. I have seen infected larvae over here before too. So again, this is going to be positive is they're going to probably take the stink bugs out for you. The negative is going to be possible. Look at all the grass that just fell right there. Now I'm playing on a high-end PC, so I don't usually have performance drops, can I, but I can imagine if you're playing, especially on like an older console, this kind of stuff could cause major, major performance hit, hiccups. So those are here, and then while we're over here, we're just going to head on over to the westerly anthill, which is the red anthill. All right, I'm in the or westerly anthill, the red anthill, and I made my way pretty far down, and I only seen like this one spot here that has the infected coming out. Didn't see any strange spores yet. Didn't see any infected insects down here. And I didn't see any other spots. That doesn't mean there's not others down here. There could be. But it's definitely spreading down here. And like I said, I don't know how long it takes for it to spread across the map. I know it's not instant. Like the next day, it's not going to be everywhere. I don't I don't believe it's everywhere. I think it takes time for it to spread, at least from what I've noticed. So I have no idea how long it takes to spread. It could get worse down here. And from what I've seen, this is the only underwater or the underground cave that I've seen it in so far. I did not see it in the old anthill. I did not see it in the larva cave that's over by spade gulch yet so that doesn't mean it's not going to be there at some point but it is definitely spreading down here and what i'm suspecting is it's probably the way they're designing is it's spreading underground and it seems to be popping up either in underground caves like this or most prominently in areas where there's dry grass that already exists so underneath the picnic table there was some dry grass and of course over here by the stink bugs there's tons of dry grass so those are the first three spots there's two more spots i want to show you before we wrap this up so now we're with the oak tree, and underneath the oak tree, of course, is a wolf spider spawn. So there could be two wolf spiders under here. And what you're going to see is we have some strange spores popping up all over here, all over the place. These guys are a little bit far away from it, so I don't know if that's actually going to damage them. Didn't damage them. Sometimes they are sitting over here sleeping, and they will get damaged by it. So these could actually be slightly beneficial to you if you can actually maybe get them to explode and do damage to the wolf spiders. They could help you out. But I, in general, this is not really going to be that much of a difference because I don't think most people come inside of here. And I have not seen any infected insects over here. And one thing I will say while we're over here by the tree, I did not see any in Burgle's lab. That doesn't mean there can't be any there in the future or underneath of it. But there is one more spot that I want to show you before we end this video. Final location I'm going to show you is over on the north side of the koi pond. So we are up here. And of course, there's the grill up there. This is where you get to charcoal chunks. And here we have infected larva. You see some strange spores back there. There's an infected ladybug. I think I saw an infected weevil and an infected mite over here and infected gnats. So you're getting everything over here. And look at how much grass is falling right here. So I guess the positive over here, there's two, is there three infected ladybugs? Two infected ladybugs, one regular ladybug. Now the infected will attack their own. So this, they will actually start attacking each other. And as you can see here, this entire section of dry grass is probably going to end up coming down at some point. Especially if I was over here aggroing them. Now I'm in creative, so they're not attacking me. But you're just going to see how much dry grass is falling down. And you can see the infected lady, but the infected are fighting the regular ladybug. And I'm pretty sure the infected is probably going to win. The infected's taking zero damage and she's just getting lit up. So you could get a benefit of that. There's also stink bugs up here. So you could have, have a 
free stink bug parts from these. The big issue here is going to be this is the only source currently for getting charcoal consistently. I think you can also get it in the buried treasure from the sandbox, but the consistent spots of getting it are up there and down here. So these two chunks down here are going to be really tough to get if you have all these infected insects over here. So just to recap, we got infected insects and strange spores up here in the north koi, north northwestern part of the koi pond. Underneath the picnic table, there was a couple ladybugs and some strange spores. Over here in the dry grass area where the stink bugs are, there were some infected ladybugs and some strange spores. In the anthill, there was a little bit of infected, but there was no strange spores or infected insects down there yet. Not sure if they're going to spread. And then underneath the oak tree where the wolf spiders spawn underneath there, there were some strange spores, no infected insects. And from what I saw, there was no, I didn't see any infected insects on the entire eastern, southeastern, northeastern side of the map. I did check a lot of the koi pond, did not see anything inside the actual koi pond. That doesn't mean I didn't miss something. There are a lot of caves down there, and it doesn't mean it's not going to come in the future. So as you can see, turning off the haze does dramatically change the, the map. It makes it, it just changes the game completely. Now, because it has a cutscene, I'm guessing that at some point in the story, you're going to have to turn it off. That's, there'd be no other reason for doing it. And it's going to be interesting to see whether or not they let us turn it back off or turn it back on so that we can contain it. Although once it's spread, who knows what's going to happen. Those are all the positive and negative effects of turning off the haze. The decision to do so or not is really up to you. Personally, I'm holding off on turning it off in my main multiplayer and solo saves for now. Let me know in the comments what you will be doing. If you already turned it off, are you happy with the choice you made or do you wish you could turn it back on? If you found this video helpful, make sure to click the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.